All right, everybody, welcome to the Get Bit Podcast, the podcast for blurs and nerds and all those of fandom to love and to enjoy. I'm your host, Mel Swift, you can. Of course, my man to my right, um, Joe, who's probably coming up with another nickname this time. Joe, Joe, what you got? Horse riding monkey enthusiast, Joe Tanella. <laughs> he never ceases to amaze me. Before I do what started, I can. Before we do get started, guys, we are a family-friendly podcast, although words do fly because of our excitement and things of that nature, and sometimes we forget that we're live. Um, and sometimes there may be things that might be shown that might be too intense for young viewers, so viewer discretion advised, uh, aside from that welcome. So let me go ahead and go into it. Let's go ahead and address the elephant in the room, or should we say dragon? Or should we say Abomination? I'm pretty much talking about Shang-Chi. Uh, for all those that don't know Shang-Chi and the Legend of Ten Rings, um, <laughs> I need to go ahead and say this because usually on Get Bit Podcast, yes, um, you are wondering why we do this on Sunday. It's only because of a newest Marvel movie, Post Blip, had came out this Thursday. Both me and Joe and several of our friends have seen it, hence why we're doing another special Sunday edition. Now, the rule on Get Bit is whatever uh, movies do come out, we do give them a week before we truly go into spoilers. So this is a non-spoiler review, which means we are not going to give anything specific away about the movie. Um, it, it goes without being said that, yes, it's a Marvel movie. Yes, you need to stick around until the very end. Um, if the last 20 years of those movies has not taught you that, at this point, you've not been paying attention. So... Uh, with that being said, I'm going to let Joe go first uh, and give his uh, impressions of what he thought of Shang-Chi and Legend of the Ten Rings. So I did not know about Simu Liu. Uh, I have not watched him's convenience, but he is one of my new favorite actors. I have watched Tony Lung for a very long time. Infernal Affairs is one of my favorite movies. And I'm new to Aquafina. Uh, the only Aquafina thing I've seen is where she's a dragon. So, uh, yeah, this, most of the cast is pretty new, and I, if you don't know who Michelle Yeoh is by now, I don't know what Earth you're living on, so. If you don't know who Michelle um, Yeoh is, you you can't say you've never seen a martial arts movie, but go ahead. I, I have seen her debut martial arts movie, Yes, Madam, with Cynthia Rothrock. Please go fight, <laughs> watch her fight Kung Fu Hitler. <laughs> But go ahead, keep going, Joe. Um, Groucho Marx. It's like a fine line between the two. Anyways, movie's fantastic. Uh, probably the best fight sequences in hand-to-hand -hand combat period. Easily outdoing, and people will hate me for this. I don't care. Easily outdoing any sort of combat sequence you've seen in Winter Soldier or in uh, Falcon Winter Soldier. Anything involving Captain America because he's their only real hand-to-hand -hand fighter. This blows that out of the water. Mm -hmm. um, there is a slight tonal shift in the third act, but somewhat for the better. I do enjoy that this is a morally gray versus good story. I'll give you that. <laughs> um, great acting all around. Just the right amount of Aquafina. I am getting used to her, but I can see where there was a lot of fear of her sense of humor over being overbearing in the movie and there was just the right amount of her uh benedict wong fantastic uh i went to go see it with jared and i had to inform him that was the comic accurate abomination mm -hmm. which so i want to know if they're going to explain that in she hulk or not that's a good question that's because a very good it's question supposedly the same actor I know they probably didn't use him because he was all grunts and growls, this one, but it is technically the same abomination from The Incredible Hulk. The and then power. we get uh, <laughs> returning characters, which I will not spoil. We will get the most adorable animal possible without a face. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's about the best way you can put that. Um... Which I showed my sister, and she says it's a little creepy, and I told her it's Chinese mythology. Just roll with it. Mm -hmm. uh, I really, really enjoyed it. Um, do I think this is going to have the societal impact that Black Panther did? Honestly, no. And I am of Oriental descent. But that's like comparing mm -hmm. apples and oranges at that thing. But like, I know someone's going to go out and make that comparison. And it's really not a fair one. No, I, I see your point on that. Um... 
basically for me, I, I, I'm with you. I loved it from beginning to end. Um, and also, you're probably going to wonder why Joe's going to probably mention the soundtrack. If you haven't heard, if you haven't. Soundtrack okay, is dope. The, the soundtrack is awesome. So I, I will give it that. It, it's just like Black Panther. Its soundtrack was great. Shane Chi and the Legend of Tangerine soundtrack is great. Um, story wise, it had everything. It had everything that I thought they would do with the story, um, with the character. Even more so, there are some surprise guests in there and also some directions they're taking. Yet I'm going to say very carefully you should stay during the entire movie. If you stay during the entire movie, a lot of things are going to make sense, especially as far as where the MCU is heading. That's all I'm going to say about that. Um, but I do love the fact of just, it was, it felt authentic. I mean, the best way I can explain Shang-Chi, it felt authentic. Like, like when you watch It Man, or when you watch Kill Switch, or you watch The Raid, or you watch, you know, your your um what's that director's name i can't save my life right now um because he was a great martial arts film director and i can't think of his name because Samo hung jackie chan jet lee all the great martial artists worked with this guy and he produced just just very fine martial arts films and i cannot think of his name to save my life right now it's like two people but it's that kind of quality and for a lot of people that don't know, Shang-Chi was given the smallest budget of any MCU movie. So if you go and watch it and see what they've done with it, it first, of, first and foremost, it is visually amazing. Um, what they decided, where they decided to go with it, and certain things you're going to see. And yes, you're probably going to have a question regarding an initial scene. Um, like the theater I was in, because I took, I took, I took a... I took my I took my child and my nephew um, and my girlfriend to the movie, and um, they kept on saying a certain name when something popped up, and I had to there and tell them, "No, it's not. It's not that person." <laughs> Although I was like, "You're not. You're not wrong." How they set that up, you're not wrong in thinking it's a specific person that when you saw a specific sculpture that you immediately thought it was said person, but it's not. But I had to, you know tell them that you're not wrong but just different area but Neil's yeah just... they have to they they very care with, and still without any spoilers mm -hmm. i was wrong he is not in the movie but they had to very very carefully step around him mm -hmm. because he's so intrinsically tied to uh well, he's technically not the Mandarin because that's a chicken dish. Yeah. So, oh, look. oh the, the oh. And by the way, the way because a lot of you are wondering. Well, you saw Ben Kingsley, yes. Watch <laughs> it for him alone. Him alone will make up for how you feel about Iron Man three. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> his, his part alone will make you will make up for it, but. But we'll keep... just say Wen Wu. We'll, we will just use the name Wen Wu, which is the character's, which is Tony Lung's character name. Yeah, he is. They have to carefully step around the bigger dude because he is not in the film. Right, and plus he's not market. He's not really marketable toward children. So they had but to step. Dragon Man in pants is absolutely marketable to people. Put Godzilla in pants. I dare you. It'll be marketable. <laughs> He, yeah, I think I think they already so, put him in sneakers and made him uh, go to the court with Barkley. I think there's a certain company that'll be against that right now. <laughs> I'm not going to say their name because they got way too much clout. But that being said, um, I'm talking about we had a drag, we had a dinosaur in pants and Darkwing Duck. We can get away with that. That's Disney. <laughs> well, so is this at this point now? No, that's also true, but. Uh, <laughs> But with that being said, um, like I said, we both recommend Chang Chi. Um, for all those who are wondering, is it is it kid safe? It is kid safe. Uh, some questionable language is in there. So, but let's be honest: if your kid's been on Fortnite or if he's played any multiplayer, if they played any multiplayer game, chances are they've probably heard a lot worse. But it's it's safe for kids because, well, it's marketed toward kids. I mean, let's be honest: it's Marvel. But again, definitely check that out. But move right along, as we're going to keep it in the Marvel. We're going to keep it in the Marvel space right now. We want to talk about, you know, from a, going from a bright spot to a dark spot. And I'm talking about the Marvel What If episode, um, a Ripley titled, What If Strange Lost His Heart, Not His Hands? And we are going to go into descriptions of it because it's been more than a week since it's been out. So, we, you know, it's been five days. 
So if you haven't seen it by now, spoiler alert, we're going to talk about the details of it. So if you have not seen it, this is your one and only warning to mute us or come back to us once you've watched it, but we're going to go into it. Um, but anyway, so this Mar- so this What If, of course, the What If series it just posts a, posts a lot of questions about hip- about uh, hypothetical universes that the wrong, you know, the wrong or right decision may be made. In this case, Stephen Strange, which I thought was kind of cool that they still stuck with the time stone and the fact of, you know, Christine actually being in the car with him at the time when he was by himself, of course, in the movies. He crashes. Uh, well, I should say, um, yeah, the accident, how it happens is quite different. But the outcome of it is that Christine dies, of course. He, move, he of course, as we know, moves on to Karmitage, learns the learns the mystic arts, becomes the Sorcerer Supreme. Um it's only then those in those complications that he thinks that okay maybe I can go back and I can go save Christine, which he used the time stone and you can see in multiple scenes he tries every which way to save her from harm, but she still winds up dying somehow. It got to the point to where um, it introduces something which I thought was pretty cool, where they introduce they say the lost library of Cogliostro and they mention Cogliostro. Which, for a lot of Doctor Strange fans, you're like, are we actually going to see Obeyed? Yes, you do. But it's not the Obeyed that we know from the comics. It's more like a toned-down one, which is fine. They just want to sit there and point out that that Strange is basically trying to find a way to basically, um, and this is going to be Doctor Who territory I'm about to cover, I'm about to go into, because the Ancient describes her death as a fixed point in time. So fixed point in times can't be altered. I know a lot of Doctor Who fans are going to sit there and go, but that's, yes, we know. They're not the only series that said it. We know Doctor Who, and I'm going to be honest about Doctor Who. I I love Doctor Who, but let's be honest, he screws up time himself doing a lot of stuff he shouldn't be doing. But that's beyond the point. Beyond the point. Because I know there's going to be a lot of BBC fans going at me like Doctor Who, like I just cussed out Liverpool. But... Again, uh, but he but he goes into the but Kagi Astro does the leads him to the library and he pretty much finds out that in order to in order to basically change an absolute point in time he would need immense power which we do see him calling up different creatures um, as you as you can tell with the tentacles was the first one he called which I still thought was funny as all get out you called him yeah it's Shumagorath that is the yeah. underlying uh, big bad for this series it's Shumagorath at this point if you were mm-hmm. your two for two. Yeah, I've seen yeah. giant tentacles out of an ethereal portal. Yeah, the same, the same one, the same one the Red Skull tried to call. I still love the fact that he called him out the gate. Time, excuse me, can I borrow a tentacle? And what? And uh, that's a no. But to keep this going, he does eventually does. Oh, he starts off small, absorbing different creatures and things of that nature, up until he gets to the point to where he goes back to Shimagor again, and this time he wastes no time in cutting him off of the legs. Literally and figuratively, and absorbing and absorbing tentacles. It gets to the point to where where he has enough to he has enough power to where he does go back to where he basically resurrects Christine. And doing so, and I'm still calling this, he had enough power to where he corrupted the Infinity Stone, because you can see it go from green to red. And as he's bringing Christine back, the world around him, or I should say the universe around him, crumbles because he was warned by the ancient one um that if you do try to bring her back. That the cat that the consequences of her doing this of, of you doing this will be the end of the universe. Now I did skip a part to where um, and I and thank you guys. I know you I know you're about to point this out, Joe, and I thank you for that because you gave me that look for a second. Let me not also forget the part that during the time of the ancient the ancient did actually split Doctor Strange into kind of a light and dark situation where the light part of himself was going like, okay, I can't change anything. I've got to move forward. While the dark is the one in the library, and eventually that um, he was told by Cogliastro that he'll never have full power unless he retains the other half. In which it's amazing that the darker side, Doctor Stephen Strange, was confronted by everyone and saying, "This is not a good idea. You're going to cause the end. Of, you're going to cause the end of the world." Even his light self was like, "We can't do this. This is something. This is a line we can't cross." Which eventually does lead to a battle. And I guess you could say the darker Stephen Strange reabsorbs his light self and becomes whole again, brings back Christine, and of course, as she's alive, the universe decides. The universe is slowly, as you see, just the way they the way they drew it was actually pretty cool. 
where you can just see it's eroding. Like you literally see black spots on everything and on everybody. You can see black spots on Wong um, to which Steven realizes like, okay, I messed up, tries to use said power to change things and realizes he couldn't. And he, what I loved about the episode was the conversation he had with the watcher. He's like, I've known, a, he's like, I've known about you. I've sensed your presence. You are a God. You can, you can change all of this. And the watcher's like, even if I wanted to, I can't, I can't interfere. And of course he's pleading to him like, oh, the world doesn't, the world doesn't, uh, the world doesn't deserve to be punished. Neither does Christine. And of course the watcher's like, hey dude, you create your own personal hell. So live with it. And the episode ends with basically Christine also being eroded. And Strange is left in this little paradigm bubble of a collapsed universe, which he does have ultimate power, but he's alone and can't use it to save himself. And that was probably, and I'm not sure what the next What If episode is going to be about, but they won't, I'm not even sure they're going to go as dark as they did with this one. But I still love the episode. But Joe, what did you think of it? I was fun. I mean, I'm not the most knowledgeable in Doctor Strange, but uh, I know a giant uh, squid monster when I play one, so <laughs> I saw Shumagorath coming. Uh, it's just a fairly simple light and dark story with the consequences. I like that the Watcher pointer says, like, yeah, I'm not a god. All I do is watch people and mm -hmm. record. Uh, I ain't helping you, and he pretty much traps himself in the sphere, so the odd thing is, if you turn the subtitles on, they actually denote him as Supreme Strange, and the light Doctor Strange is as Doctor Strange. Interesting. I didn't, I didn't try that, but I will now. I will go back and try it later. But, um, but yeah, I just thought, I thought it was a great episode just because it was different, and it didn't end happily. Which is the whole point. Everybody thinks all these what-if stories are going to end happily. They don't. I mean, if, no. you're, if, if, you're, if you're really being honest, a lot of these what-if stories in the comics did not end. A lot of them ended very dark. So, If you want light and happy, you need to be reading what the, not what if. That's true. But but again, great. it was a great episode, so kind of looking forward to it. I think what if, I think what if has eight episodes of memory serves you right. So I think this was four. So I think we maybe have season one because oh they're doing seasons okay probably that is more shows now okay cool. I mean I would imagine they can do more than just like adhere to the MCU itself right as more characters enter we have more possibilities to do things or they could just focus on a character that's like a Trisha I I'm terrible at saying this but like a third tier character yeah and just give them their own thing like what if Genki got the spider powers. True. That is very true. But yeah, but again, it was still a great episode. But speaking of great episodes, um, I'm going to go ahead and skip past DC Legends of Tomorrow. Let me save you some time. It's not worth watching because I hate what they're doing with Constantine right now and trying to. It, it's just not. It's not. It's Orly just not good drinks with friends. They they went so far away from it that it's uneven. It's not even recognizable drink with friends. Mm. It's not even that. I thought it was at first, but it's not even that. Gotcha. So it's like when I tell you it's not worth it, um, ladies and gentlemen. I know the I know Legend of Tomorrow has a season finale tonight. Um, I will still watch it, but at this point, I'm like I am just like eh on Legend of Tomorrow. However, I do want Joe because he is the Star Man slash Star Girl expert on this, and he will be able to explain this definitely in more detail than I can. I want him to, uh, if you don't mind, sir. To tell us your uh, your review of Star Girl Summer School Chapter Four episode. This was kind of like a filler episode, but not really because we get to see Cindy slash Shiv start to build the I guess ISA Junior mm -hmm. uh, through means. Uh, Star Girl has a nice little chit chat with the Shade, where the Shade pretty much tells her, "It's like child, just get out of my way. You're kind of bothering." <laughs> and then we have a small subplot with uh, uh, who the character who would be Arrowette right. should follow the path in the comics. Uh, but Sportsmaster and uh, Cheshire, not Cheshire, uh, Tigress 1, mm -hmm. uh, 
They break out of prison to see their daughter's football try, uh, football practice because a scout's there for can, for a college. Uh huh. And then comedy ensues, but we learn that uh, Star Girl's mom and Tigress are actually may actually become friends in the grand scheme of things. That was still funny. That that, that one was, mom, that one mom moment, like. Okay, we we might have something in common. Like, okay, we vibe. <laughs> I just hope what happens to her in the comics doesn't happen to her in real life. Ooh. Is it the... No, Brian. I'm not. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I mean, I don't want to spoil anything in case people want to look into it. Because Cheshire is the first daughter of uh, Tigress. I don't mm-hmm. know if Sportsmaster is her dad. But... Uh, Tigress 2 slash Arrowette is exactly who this character is. So, like I said, it was a fun episode with some filler, but also it sets up the junior ISA and then the Shade just having a nice talk to Stargirl of, I'm not here to bother you. Stay out of my way. (laughs) That was, you know, the Shade just, he's like, that's what I was thinking about. You you know, you called earlier, you called the last podcast where he he was neutral, uh, what you call him, neutral good? Like, he didn't really have a good side or a bad side. He was like... No, 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 no. So, it's weird with him. He's probably just, at this point, lawful evil. Okay. Because if they follow the shade through, through, he actually has a being within himself that makes him do evil things. Yeah. But if they play on that, I have no idea, because that's going to be complicated. We also learned that Dr. Midnight's in the Shadow Realm, which may also uh, the actual Dr. Midnight, Charles McKnighter, is in the Shadow Realm, which may also be how we find Obsidian later on down the road. Possibly. Because Jenny's looking for Todd, and Todd, does, if Todd's as young as they are, he may not have control of his powers, and he may just be stuck in the Shadow Realm. Right. Probably so. Not to be confused with the other Shadow Realm. That one's there for two bit duelists. I'm gonna leave that one alone. Go ahead, keep going because I'm trying to compose myself right now because I was I was trying not to sit there and say a joke. I was trying to stop myself and not say a joke. But but no, I do like the fact that you know that does confirm that Doctor Midnight is alive and he's in that shadow realm. And I'm like, okay, so that tells us that somewhere down the line we are going to see him come along. But yeah, the whole thing about yeah, Sportsmaster and Tigress just we just want to break out just to watch our daughter. It's like, what kind of villains are you? <laughs> we're not villains; we're parents. And the kid alone, of course, now we know that she's probably going to be joining because of uh, what old girl was. I can't remember her name to save my life. Wow. Bindi slash Shiv. Thank you. And that she used Eclipso to basically make her see something that wasn't there. So that very much just scuttlebutted her dreams. But that's just her putting her in Justice Society back together. Kind of putting a new band back together, especially with the fact that she recruited the son of the Fiddler, too. So, so that's going to be interesting. But I liked it. Like I said before, I, I'm with you on that. It was a pretty fun episode. It was interesting to see that it wasn't really, it wasn't really superhero esque. It was more along the lines of, you know, villains actually, some villains actually having a human side and saying, "Look, we don't want. like we don't want to fight you." As far as you see, Sportsmaster, look, you keep the wrench in your hand. I'll even give you. I'll even give you a head start to stripes. Just let me see our daughter. Let's go. Just let us see our daughter practice. We'll go back. We'll go back willingly, which goes to tell you is how quickly, how easily they broke out of prison and they're going to walk right back in, take them to a different prison. <laughs> but, but I still like, but I, I still like it. So anyway, but the other, other show that I don't want to talk about, um, of course, Titans, uh, episode, uh, excuse me, season three, episode six was Lady Vic. For all those that don't know, yes, it is that Lady Vic from The Brave and the Bold, and I want to say from The Long Night, but I'm not really sure right now because she is a Batman villain, um, that she was being recruited in this episode by Crane. Crane is starting to shape up to be the to be the big bad this season um, because, of course, him taking, Jason, him taking Jason Todd and basically saying that he's kind of the base on the Red Hood. But we also see in this episode that... Um, that Todd and Crane are having a little bit of a tiff, even more so that Jason wants more of the no fear formula and Crane is letting him know in a very brutal way by Lady Vic, 
you can be replaced at any time, which uh, I thought was interesting. Um, but it also shows us a different side of Barbara Gordon, you know, before Batgirl, if you will, um, and the way that she met Dick and how their relationship actually blossomed into it and how they're tied in with Lady Vic because Lady Vic did go after Barbara Gordon, but I got like, I love how they did that fight scene with her in the wheelchair, but she still had the Tonfas and was still just, that's got to be embarrassing as an assassin. You can't even take a single person in a wheelchair and they break out Tonfas and almost whoop your ass. That's pretty it, bad. There's Barbara Gordon, so there's that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, she was trained, but I mean, but what does that say from a person? <laughs> you couldn't even take him, you couldn't even take her. But another thing about this was the episode, uh, it's between Corey and Blackfire, which I still say that's that is the most. It's almost like they're, you know, what it, it, it reminded me of when I was watching the episode, it reminded me of, of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 between Nebula and Gamora. Like they, it's like they can't stand each other, but for those very brief moments, they have that. Okay, I maybe see what you're coming from situation, and Gar and poor Gar is in the middle of it. Like, um, I'm trying to figure, I'm trying to figure out who's who's not gonna. It's like, is she gonna try to kill me, or you know, poor uh, poor Superboy in the background? Is he your manservant? <laughs> it's like I require a manservant, and you see Corey just. We don't do that here, and I don't know why, but it, even though that phrase I hear that all the time, we don't do that here. It immediately goes back to ba- it goes back to Black Panther for me, but. Aside from that, um, the one thing I did like at the end of the episode um, was the fact that we see Todd going out on his own. I'm not gonna call it. I'm not gonna call his people the outlaws, even though he did start putting a group of people together. You see them enter a very familiar restaurant, and you hear a very familiar name get said, which tells me that uh, Tim Drake may actually become into the role now, not immediately going into Robin Roll um, as he does do in the comics, but he will become more of it since his entire family just got murdered. So that might be a new Robin coming out for that. But oh, oh, if it's not Bizarro and Athena, it does not count as the Outsiders. I'm saying this now. Well, I mean, yeah, I give you that. That's why I didn't want to call. It, I didn't want to call. It the, I didn't want to call it that. That's why I was like, you know, you see this group of people get together and they just take the same no fear toxin, and I'm like, no, I'm not doing that. I'm not calling that. It's still Red Hood, just get, Red Hood, and just. Red Hood and Expendable Thugs. That's all I'm going to call it as. But I do like the fact that where they're going in the story so far, season three is completely off the rails. But uh, what did you think of uh, of the episode six of uh, Titans? I'm still waiting for the whole thing to finish. Honestly, I'm more interested in uh, the upcoming Doom Patrol. Yes. Especially because... Uh, hmm. God, what's Missy's actress? Doom Patrol, I think it starts... When does that start? Uh, the new season, I think we're two weeks away from that. If I'm right. Michelle Gomez. Michelle Gomez is coming into Doom Patrol, and she's basically just reprising her role as Missy based off the trailer. Yeah, I'm trying to remember when it starts. Oh, September 23rd. There we go. So we're not too yeah, far off. Towards the end that. of the month. Yeah, so we're not so we're not too far off from that. But yes, we will. But uh, but we will be covering that too once that starts. Because if you have, I meant to say this too. If you haven't seen Doom Patrol, um, you can watch on HBO Max or through other means. We are not going to say what those other means are. We are not going to tell you how to get to them. We're just going to say we are washing your hands clean of it. However, you choose to watch it is beyond you. We didn't suggest anything. So take it as you will. But we will be covering Doom Patrol once that comes out. Um, I did have some video games I did want to talk about, but honestly, there are a whole bunch of uh, would-bees right now, except for Black Myth Wukong. Um, That is actually being made by Epic Games, which is great because Epic Games did bring Gears of War um, before the Coalition. But there's no date on that right now. But if you've seen Black Myth Wukong, it is... It is actually based off the Divine War in Heaven. So if you've never if you've never read that, definitely read that. Um, but another but another podcast not too long from now, we will go over uh, the trailer for it, and we're not gonna go over the entire trailer because it's seventeen minutes long because they wanted to show us the entire gameplay of it. Um, but we will do that another time. 
There's also two other games I want to mention that are going to be coming along that I can't wait to play. Uh, one of them is called Faith of Dance Chant Hereafter, which reminds me of Dark Souls was fun. <laughs> I know a lot of people are playing Dark Souls right now. It's like, Dark Souls was fun. No, dying multiple times in the same spot because you never got the person's character down and they took you down in one hit was not fun. It was challenging. Dark Souls There's was fun when it was called Sekiro. Say what? Dark Souls was fun when it was called Sekiro or Jedi Fallen Order. Well, yeah, that's what that was making fun, but that but it has that same basis too is what I'm trying to get at. Um, and there's also another one that reminds me of Devil May Cry because it was almost made by the same group of people called Lost Soul Aside. Um, it's a hack and slash game. Now, again, the three games I just described all have 17 minute gameplay videos. We're not going to make y'all sit through that. So um possibly next friday i will find a way to make them smaller or shorter because i still want to show these gameplays um as well as for us to go over aliens fire team um i know joe has played it i have played it we haven't got to play it together i know joe you played with jared right as far as aliens fire team no i went and played monster hunter with jared and complained about not having my dog or water bug with me the whole time we fought something <laughs> Because, uh, as I said before, the best comic analogy is, imagine you play your Spider-Man in Tales of Arise, and you go back to Monster, and you're suddenly just the thing. You just don't move as much as you used to. Dang. <laughs> That's pretty bad. But, um, but it's not what that as bad as this is two very different styles of gameplay for Monster Hunter. That's true. But what, we'll, but what we'll plan to do, because me and Joe, I know Joe's, uh, our schedule is a little bit different. We are going to find time this week because Joe has been streaming um, his gameplay under the Gitbit Podcast channel. Joe, where, the, where can they find that Twitch channel to where you're uh, streaming your gameplay, sir? Uh, Twitch TV, uh, twitch.tv backslash Joe, the number 10 L-O. Um, quick heads up. Uh, I once the tent hat hits, I will start streaming Tales of Arise. And again, I, I the funny part is I've known about that, but never played it. So I'm actually I'm actually gonna make myself sit down and actually play that. Um, but again, uh, but like I said, Joe usually does it. Um, when I actually have some free time, I'll be streaming as well. Hopefully, we'll be able to stream together very soon um, in Aliens Fire Team and in Street Fighter because we are long overdue for some matches in Street Fighter and Guilty Gear. Um, so we eventually will get to that. But this Friday, uh, we are going to go over those video games. We are going to give our uh, our review of Aliens Fire Team and things of that nature. So we're pushing that off for this Friday uh, coming up. So with that yep, being said... I'm working on my demolisher. I've actually already maxed out my technician. Good God. Uh, I got a lot of catching up to. I've only been playing with the gunner so far. I like the gunner just because that grenade has been saving my freaking life. <laughs> I, I just want to say my uh, flame tur torture fur puts in work. <laughs> but speaking of, but speaking of things putting in work, sir Joe, uh, Joe, I know that you have other news and comic recommendations you would like to let the world know about. I have comics. What news are we talking about? Oh, you don't got any more news? Okay, well you can go into comic books. I thought you usually you usually have some up your sleeve. Uh, this is the let first. Me look at the group chat. It's been a bit. <laughs> Does that trust me? It's Labor, it's Labor Day uh, weekend. Got Shadows already... take on Shang Chi. Wait, wait, see, I'm sorry, I, I talked over you. Say it again. I said we got Shadows. Uh, look at Shang Chi. Oh crap! I don't got it queued up. Um, ah, yes. Crap! 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 Uh, give me a second. I'm gonna see if I can try to go over. Go ahead, and do your comic recommendations. Let me. Well, see. actually, we do have one more video game thing we got to talk about because this past week. We got the gameplay trailer of Midnight Suns. Oh, right. You can talk about that. Let me get Shadow stuff So going. this has already become very divisive because people were expecting a hack and slash given the contents. Uh, apparently, the majority of people forgot what Firaxis, what game Firaxis makes for a living. Uh, but also, this is kind of a change for us, too, because this is a... Uh, card battle game to a degree where your combat is uh your combat powers i don't know if it's entirely dictated certainly special moves and interactions are used via card battle powers uh we are actually expect to see a secondary trailer where it is wolverine 
the new OC and, uh, against Sabretooth for more gameplay and a boss battle. But we do get to see um, that it is what the combat is like. And I'm going to be using magic pretty much the whole way through. Uh, unfortunately for me, much to my chagrin, this is also a waifu simulator, it seems, where you get to be best buds with your favorite superhero. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about that, and I'm fairly <laughs> certain if I try to pat magic on the head, I will lose an arm, if I'm lucky. So, but I will still try to be best super buddies with magic. <laughs> um, maybe, maybe Carol. Definitely, definitely, definitely need go because I love runaways. Uh, Wolverine, because despite how he cannot, despite the fact not being drunk, he has a beautiful singing voice for karaoke. I know you were looking forward to Midnight Suns. I, I he started... also sinks like a rock in the ocean. Dang. Well, I know you're looking forward to Midnight Suns. I'm actually looking forward to it too. And I, you know, when you showed me the gameplay on it, I was like, okay, so it's turn based. It's it's uh so it's like uh uh It's XCOM fighting that's turn based and yeah. and uh placement based. It's just we don't know if you get standard attacks and those cards are for special attacks. Or those cards entirely dictate your course of battle. Fair point, but still looking forward to it. But we'll, but we'll, but we'll probably have some more. In, we'll probably have some more about that come Friday as well. So now that I got the way, I do. But I'm like, and also let me apologize, Shadow. I should have had your stuff queued up beforehand because I know you did a non spoiler review. So let me go ahead and play that and uh, go from there because, like I said, he's a part of our podcasting group, and he also. Uh, had some thoughts on his non spoiler review of Shang Chi and Ten Rings. Yeah. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to Shadow Creators Entertainment. I'm your host, Shadow King, and finally, Shang Chi and the Legend of the Ting Rings, Ting Ten, Ten Rings <laughs> is out. And uh, yeah, calling it right now. I just I just got home from the theater. Just had uh, the camera and lights and everything up. Shang Chi is my current favorite phase four movie of the the year the year we got a couple more left but yeah it, it beats out Doug Widow I'm super hyped for that and uh yeah no let's talk about it. this is a no spoiler review uh make sure you guys are tuned in subscribe do all the things subscribe like comment all the good stuff so you can stay tuned for Wednesday when I drop my non spoiler breakdown review that I have to take a couple of days to actually film and write and record. So, Shang Chi and the Legend of Ten Rings is a 2021 release from Marvel. I believe it's supposed to come out, if I'm not mistaken, either earlier this year or late last year, like with the original release schedule. But no matter what time it came, we finally got it. And shout out, just right off the bat, to the representation in this movie. Of course, Chung chi is a predominantly Asian character. And so having a predominantly Asian cast in this movie totally rocked. I felt like I was watching a, 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 a mixture of a lot of different things. A classic martial arts film. You know, the, the, ones, uh, the ones I grew up with in the mid-2000s, like Rush Hour and... Um, most of the Jackie Chan films that I, I've watched, I mean, it just it had a lot of different feels, and of course, it, it definitely has the feel of a Marvel movie because it is one. Um, but I think it all really blends very, very well. Um, the cast, uh, Simu Louis, that's that's definitely wrong. Simu Liu as Shang Chi, Aquafina as Katie. Tony Leung as the Mandarin. Boy, I got a lot to say about him. <laughs> Paula Chen as Lee Ku Wu. Michelle Yeoh as Jiang Nan. Uh, 
Florian. I'm not even gonna try to pronounce his last name. The guy, from, the guy who played, uh, uh, he was in Creed too. He was the son of the uh, Drago's son. Yeah, there you go, him. Um, and a whole bunch of different other amazing, amazing, amazing um, Asian and Asian American actors. Just top notch, man. This is great, 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 great movie. I'm a martial artist. If you didn't know. Uh, what you mean? You've been following me for a while now. Yeah, I'm a um, I'm, I'm a black belt. It's have been since I was 13, and martial arts has always been a huge, huge part of my life. Even though I'm uh, not as trained as I want to be in it at the moment, it has been a huge part of my life as far as the characters I like, the shows I watch, movies I like, just and using the philosophy as a way of life. And this movie, it that, that that was one of the main reasons why I was so excited for this particular movie is because one is bringing a more traditional style of martial arts feel to the MCU. We we got fight scenes before, yep, we have. You know, we got Captain America versus Winter Soldier. We, we, we've had a lot of hand hand fights in you know, in in the MCU before. You know, and this, none of this is knocking those fights. Those are some of the most amazing fights. But the action in this movie, the choreography is just so fluid and just like the first fight scene in the bus, which I had a chance to see on YouTube. I did not watch it. I'm glad I didn't. I wanted to see it up in the movie theater the first thing first, and it was so good, so smooth. Um, shout out to the cinematography in this movie. Just, I mean, like there's no shaky cam. I mean, you you, you feel like. Every hit is fluid. Every uh, motion, every transfer from a different character is just, just God, man, it's just great. <laughs> and um, it 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 blends in with you know having that traditional starting out is just oh well he's just a random guy who can kick butt. What the heck is going on? And that style of martial arts uh, storytelling to uh, diving into the philosophy of it and using different styles to portray you know who you are as far as with him being both steeped, with Shang Chi being both steeped in light and the dark, with his father, you know, being who he is as the manner in a dark figure, and his mother being the light, he has to choose his own path. To the third act, where we get, um, you know, the martial arts and weaponry taken up to eleven, with the more fantastical style of what Marvel has always given us in both the comics and the movies. So I feel like it really blended in all very, 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 very well. Um, this is it, this is an amazing, amazing movie. I'm not gonna get into a lot of spoilers here. I'm, I'm, this is not spoiler review. I'm not getting into a lot of spoilers here. But uh, <laughs> it was already spoiled in the trailer, so I'm just gonna say this: I love Wong. <laughs> Wong is just amazing. <laughs> Wong has been amazing. Since we introduced him in, in Doctor Strange in 2016, and he just continues to be amazing as we go along in his story in the MCU. I mean, give me a Wong movie. That's all I want. Like, I, I know this is Shanti's movie. I'm talking about him. But just for a tangent, Wong is best boy in the MCU. <laughs> he's, he's, so, he's so amazing. Uh, community timing, his power. Just, just, Wong is just the best. And... <laughs> That's all, I, that's all I'm gonna say as far as spoilers. Uh, there's a lot we can talk about when, when on Wednesday, but like I said, overall, amazing cast. Everyone did very well. Well acted uh, story. The story, is, the story itself, like, um, okay, we, we knew this was gonna be the real portrayal, portrayal of the Mandarin um, because we got the fake Mandarin in you know early, early, in early MCU phase two, yeah, phase two <laughs> with Iron Man three, um, and. You know, you would think with something like that, you're just going to get like this, well, oh, hey, they took my name. I'm going to show them who true evil is. Ha, ha, ha. Here's my, organiza here's my organization. And, you know, here's my power with the ten rings. Which I'll get to those in a minute. And, ha, ha, I'm evil. Ha, ha, ha. I want my son back so he can rule by my side. Ha, ha, ha. No. <laughs> That's not it at all. <laughs> um, it really surprised me that that wasn't where the story went and I'm really really glad they did they they 
Like, after sitting there processing it, I'm glad they didn't go that route. For what we got, you know, was something totally different, which I really enjoyed. Um, God, I really can't talk without giving any spoilers away. Um, okay, you know what? That's it. Come back Wednesday. Please come back. Make sure you're subscribed. There's a lot to unpack in this movie as far as the story, what, every, what actually happens, what characters, what Easter eggs we see. I really want to take time and break it down. I'm going to do my absolute best to have that video up and ready on Wednesday with this new release schedule where I have at least one video every Wednesday and then something coming out throughout the course of the week until the end of the month. So please bear with me guys. I'm trying to do my best. Um, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you guys leave a like, comment, subscribe, do all the good things. And uh, yeah. That's it. I'm Shadow. As always, may the power protect you. May the force be with you. And make sure you have the best day possible. <laughs> Things I did not know about Shadow. I did not know he was a black belt. That was interesting. Um, but again, Shadow, I apologize. I should have had that queued up way earlier um, because you also did. You actually also did see it as well. So again, guys, uh, again, Shadow, my apologies that I do, but I definitely want to make sure that your opinion is definitely heard. So uh, that being said, Joe, what comic book recommendations you got for us? Well, I actually can answer Shadow's question. Uh, the fight choreographer for Shang-Chi is Peng Zhang, who is one of the alumni of Jackie Chan's stunt team. Ah, good to know. Uh, moving over to comics. Uh, we got a few, not a whole lot this week. I'm trying to cut it down for the sake of time. So we have, uh, Transformers King Grimlock, uh, issue two. This is, what if Grimlock was in a D&D &D world? <laughs> uh, the long and short of it, uh, Grimlock fights ogres and acquires a new party member who's a barbarian. Wouldn't he be a and tank, though? she tries to fight Grimlock, and Grimlock's like, well, this is cute. Wouldn't Grimlock basically be a tank? Yeah, she still tries to, like, hit him and fight him, and Grimlock's like, uh, me, no, me, Grimlock, no crushy. <laughs> it's so... like, you angry, me like that. You smart. However, you still squishable and weak. Crushing you, too easy. <laughs> that sounds about right. So, in the grand scheme of things, and to quickly summarize this, uh, we, Grimlock, fights some bad guys, gains a new party member, goes to party member said village to fight off the evil there. Uh, we see that, although it doesn't make sense, the main bad guy has Cybertronian magic. And so we have our official D and D quest line for Grimoire. Go fight the magician. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess if you go do D and D, there has to be a, there has to be one wizard somewhere. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, just like else, we have all of her stats. So we have Arco, class barbarian, race human, alignment chaotic good, uh, strength eight, intelligence seven, speed seven, endurance eight, courage ten, firepower one. So all she has is a sword. Skill 8, rank 4. Uh, weapons is a sword. No, 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 so, still recommend this. This is a short miniseries. Transformers is getting a lot of miniseries as of late. So, keep an eye out on that. Uh, moving over into my favorite group of mutants, the New Mutants. <laughs> actually, you, you actually you and another you and another, you and my girlfriend probably like the mutant. Well, she seen she likes the New Mutants too. But go ahead. I've been a long time New Mutants fan. Uh, writer is still Vita. Yep. Yeah. Rodriguez are on the moon with Warpath and his students. 
Uh, they were suddenly attacked by a brood, uh, by the brood, which should not be happening considering uh, a mutant brood named Broody has a king egg with him at all times. Hmm. Okay. Ergo, being it should be able to control all the brood, but for whatever reason, this particular group of them immediately attacked them. Uh, meanwhile, um, Rain and Tempest, which is part of the Resurrection 5, catch up with uh, No Girl, which is in uh, Gabby's body, and they resurrect Gabby. And then uh, pretty much it just goes from there. We do get to see Warpath just wail and go like full on engine of destruction against all the brood and they just take it out we see his kids use combo powers hmm, okay the fight's a little gory but you know it's comic violence so the broods are just analogy for aliens which i find hilarious because aliens are part of the marvel uh catalog now but uh they bleed just as green as a xenomorph <laughs> if it bleeds if it bleeds, is this not acid blood? So, Rain and Gabby have a talk now that Gabby's resurrected. They both come to the same conclusion of, oh, Farouk's up to something, and we need to stop him before the Shadow King does anything else. Uh, meanwhile, we catch up with uh, Danny, Sean, and Ileana. We know stuff's about to get good because Ileana's drinking from her gigantic coffee pot. Which, if you know in New Mutants now, if she's got that, stuff's about to go down. Right. Uh, they're talking about how they probably should be taking care about Farouk. And Ileana's I'm just like, look, I'm a war captain. I have full authority to go wreck this man whenever I please. <laughs> and then Danny's just like, he's still Krakoan. We can't attack him without proof. Nor should we be able to. And then Rain comes in with Gabby, and or Rain comes in and she's like, so I got proof. And Nilly is like, finally, violence. That's kind of bad. That's really <laughs> bad. Her specific words is, enough with the soft touch. Just, that is bad. And she's cracking her knuckles. God bless this woman. She, so she's... we get over to Farouk, and Farouk's like, all right, let's play time with all these kids. Creepy man is creepy. That, that, that doesn't sound very Anakin, but okay. Well, I mean, he can take down you know, as many young things as he wants. They still have the resurrection for the girls. True. <laughs> I just like the Dillion. It's just like, first chance of violence, violence. Everyone else like, no, we can't do violence. And the moment there's just a point, moment there's evidence, violence. <laughs> it's basically Grimlock. Basically Grimlock, oh, yeah. basically Grimlock on a bad day. But scarier. So, so much <laughs> scarier. True. Uh, moving over to a Elseworlds tale, we have Dark Ages issue one with Tom Taylor and Eamon Corallo. Corello. So this is an alternate Marvel universe. Uh, the long and short of it is a world-ending disaster comes in and pretty much blacks out all technology. Uh, they try to go and stop it. Uh, multiple superheroes are killed in this event. Wand is immediately unmade. Uh, the thing and uh, the thing is killed. Doctor Strange is killed. Only Sue uh, survives the first skirmish. Hmm. Okay. Heroes okay. everywhere are trying to save people. Ant-Man is permanently stuck in giant mode because all the technology is shut down. Yeah. Iron yeah. Man is loses pretty much an arm and a leg because he clips a plane and crash lands. Um, we Shield pretty much is almost immediately annihilated because the helicopter just smashes into the ocean. Uh, multiple people are dying because of cardiac arrest because, you know, pacemakers are electronic. True. Uh, yeah, much Viv's, Vision's daughter dies because electronic. Right. Pete also has to learn that uh, he no longer has web shooters. 
Yeah, they're also electronic. Yes. <laughs> and uh, this is an alternate universe, so Mae Parker is a thing, but she's also only like five. <laughs> so the building crashes around MJ and Aunt May and Little May, and Peter is desperately trying to dig them out, and then May just like pops up holding up a giant rock slab and just goes, Dad. <laughs> Damn. I'm sorry. So, uh, looks like Marvel's heading into steampunk territory because uh, what we hear is actually a story told by Peter seven years ago. So, Pete's getting a little Hal Jordan at the temples. But uh, he now has steampunk uh, arm gauntlet web shooters. And a lot has changed in the world. Uh, we got steampunk Iron Man. Venom has gone to Miles Morales. Uh, Beast has become full kitty cat. She Hulk's still around. Uh, looks like Reed is steampunk scientist man. And Apocalypse has finally gotten what he always wanted. Only the strongest will survive in this world. <laughs> and then we get character sketches. So we get like full on steampunk Iron Man. And we get to see like a whole bunch of stuff. We also get to see that uh, Little May has her own spider suit, and she is now ten or twelve. Yeah, that's not that's not odd at all. I mean, almost any version of May is going to turn out to be a spider kid. Yeah. We also see that uh, Lauren Laura's okay. Of course, this also could be Gabby since it's twelve seven years in the future. But there is a wolf. No, it's Laura because two claws. So we see Laura's officially taking over the mantle as Wolverine. So it's like a what if? So it's like a what if story. It's a what? It's it's yeah. It's an Elseworlds tale is just the better way to put it because this isn't under the what if moniker. This is a new Tom Taylor story. Gotcha. Uh, cutting over to Last Annihilation, we get the newest thing of here, which is Net Last Annihilation: Wiccan and Hulkling. While simultaneously and uh, what you call it, Ego, the Living Planet, <laughs> which uh, Dormammu sends an envoy of himself, a piece of himself, because uh, Billy's sword uh, disrupts all magic, but okay. Tommy can't wield it because it screws with his magic. So in the long run. He does a magic teleportation spell and swaps places. Billy and Tommy swap places, and Tommy just immediately annihilates their Doromamu adversary. Incompatible magic? That's a first. Mm hmm. But I mean, in the grand scheme of things, what this really is is setting up the origin of how Tommy and Billy got together. Or not Tommy and Billy, I'm sorry. That's the actual twins. How Hulkling and Wicking get together. <laughs> which is very, which is a very sweet story in the grand scheme of things. I'll take your word for it. Uh, moving over into DC, uh, we got Static Shock issue three. Uh, the long and short of this, because this is kind of like maybe pivotal. Uh, Hotspot just immediately flips and starts working for the government and naming names, and becomes the biggest narc there ever was. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, that's pretty much the point of this entire episode of, or this issue is, Virgil's still trying to like do stuff. We see get together with certain bang babies. Uh, Virgil is trying to make himself a super suit. We get to see the class, the animated Static Shock uh, costume when Virgil was pretending to be a superhero as a kid, striking a common Rider pose. Even saying Henshin. Uh, <laughs> then Virgil makes his classic, uh, like Malcolm X hat, static uh, costume, which we also know this is, will not be his permanent costume from all the art and whatnot. He's going to have like a hybridized costume of the two. 
Uh, but like I said, he goes to school. They're repairing his house. All him, Richie, and Frida all talk and patch things up because it got kind of tense with them. And then Hot Streak shows up with government flunkies and starts naming names in his in the high school, getting kids taken and put in immediately in detention, government uh, detention centers. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it's real bad. This this wow. <laughs> uh, popping over into Wonder Girl issue three. I love 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 this series. I have to read it like several times because half the time I'm not even reading it. I'm just looking at the art. So hmm. uh, they have crash landed the plane safely. Yara and. We now know her boyfriend uh, have uh, made it safely out. Eros does miss, even though now he's currently obsessed with Yara because he screwed up and nicked himself with his own Eros. So he's in love with Yara. Meanwhile, the Amazon is trying to take out Eros by all its magical creatures. Putting Eros on the run. Yara chased after him because she sees a man being chased by a giant fight, uh, blue fire snake <laughs> and runs into pretty much all the scary stuff that's in the Amazon, including a talking alligator woman uh, who's trying to talk to Yara and whatnot. And Yara's like, hey, wait, wait a moment. Hold on. I have no just what I need for this conversation. And she pulls out that bolo and does her best scene of screen. And the bolo doesn't really do anything. It just kind of like bounces off the ground a couple of times in front of a werewolf. And the werewolf just kind of looks at her and is like, crap was that? I just thought myself, because you said alligator woman. I just had a joke that I cannot say because I'm trying to keep this family friendly. But go ahead. What, big lip alligator person from uh, Old Dogs Go to Heaven? Nope. I, it was it was way worse. It was way okay. worse. <laughs> it was so much worse. But yeah, like it, the bit of art work is easily the werewolf staring down at the bolo, just like plinking off the ground a couple times, and just giving the look of what? This 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 just confuses <laughs> all get out. Yeah, just confused. And even Yara's like, okay, and she's like slowly reeling the bolo bag. He's like, well, clearly I can see we do not belong here. I am so sorry for Justin. We'll we'll just see our way out. <laughs> like Yara, come on, honey. We're we're leaving. We don't need to talk to these pe nice people. <laughs> it's like it's like having a, it's like having your child when they're embarrassed. It's like okay, just come on. This didn't work. Just bring your little get over here. <laughs> Meanwhile, and stabs Yara with an arrow. Of course, that means that Yara falls in love with Eros. Although she is aware of what's going on, she understands that she is compelled uh, to do this and not actually wanting to because uh, Yao, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that right, um, is saying like, hey, we need to go. Um, I'm going to be stuck here if I don't. you don't stay with me. And she's like, I know I can't help myself <laughs> and does end up going with uh, Eros. Uh, a couple of the beings that are with her, uh, such as the alligator woman, the werewolf, and the little sprite from Future State, are like, hey, you got to stay here. Uh, it's your destiny. The moment you set on the soil that you have to remain and protect it, it's your duty. And she's like, yeah, I really can't. I got to go with this guy. I will be back. I promise. I got to just see what's going on over here. Right. Uh, meanwhile, Athena and Artemis are doing their best to sleuth out um, Yara via what their pantheons have told them. And they are immediately attacked by the Amazonian Amazons. <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah, the Amazons of the Amazon. That's like the dumb. Brazilian Amazons. Okay, gotcha. I was like, wait, that's always like, wait a minute. I wish I heard that right. But go ahead. Yeah. So we get to see uh, Yara. Eros takes her to uh, Yara to Olympus. We get to see Yara in a costume change. And she's like, 
oh, you changed my clothes and was this necessary? And it's like, well, you are about to meet gods and goddesses. Like, I really like that shirt though. <laughs> <laughs> so she meets with Hera and Hera's like, well, I got plans for you, kiddo. That's where it ends. Again, I don't care how long it takes for this book to come out. It can come out twice. It can come out every two months if it continues to look like this. If I am so distracted by the art that I don't even pay attention to the story, that's saying something. Okay. But then again, yeah. But you know, like, well, let's be honest. If most of us waited for Final Fantasy VII Remake for 10 years, we'll wait for a good book. I'm still waiting on George R. R. Martin to finish off The Winds of Winter. So Yeah, I, that's not going to happen. That man will be dead in the ground before that comes out. I, nope, that uh-uh. I refuse that negativity. We will have that book. I must know how it ends. I must know. I must at know this how point, it ends. At this point, he's playing the the grade school game of, I'm not going to do it the longer you, I'm going to delay it the more you ask. Well, I mean, they have been asking him since the since the since the end of A Dance with Dragons. But anyway, that's for you for you uh, Games of Thrones fans. What else you got, Joe? Uh, we got the penultimate issue of F- Infinite Frontier. Uh, we see Omega Pirate narrating, saying, "Hey," who he is directly addressing the audience this time. He's we think he's making a big speech. He is actually directly talking to us. He's explaining this is what happened to me at the end of Infinite Cri- Crisis on Infinite Earths. Uh, I found out about you, and they locked me in a, up in Arkham for years, and instead of helping me, uh, the people of my world, instead of helping me, they hid the truth. Hmm. Uh, we say, he, we find out that he is indeed the psycho pirate of the original Earth 2, not the Earth 2 of Black Superman and other stuff, but the original, original Earth 2. Gotcha. Uh, we see that he has been gathering people that were originally part of the original Earth 2, but as a result of multiple crises, has been shunted to different Earths, such as Director Bones has been shunted to Earth Zero, which is now the standard DC universe. Uh, we see a robot type of Iron Man, whose name escapes me at the moment, shunted off to Earth 8, uh, as well as other characters... Uh, Magog, um, Lady Cork, the most terrifying thing is a Yellow Lantern uh, Joker. That is still the last name, which I'll never get out of my head, but go ahead. Yep. Um, Cat Madam, Superwoman of Earth 3, for whatever reason. Uh, even the throwback to the 90s of The Man Called Fate. <laughs> And like Dr. Ivo, and we see him like Psycho Pirate literally narrating as he's walking across the panels. Wait, he's narrating himself or he's narrating a story? He's narrating to the reader as he's walking across the comic book panels. Like uh, he's not adhered to a panel, he is walking through the page. Gotcha. Okay. Fourth wall, fourth wall break. Uh, yeah. Well, he is one of the few characters that does fourth wall break in the DC universe. Okay. Meanwhile, Director Bones has gone back to his original supervillain state, complete with his Sinai touch. Uh, that does not last for too long because Alan Scott and Obsidian are going to be fighting him. And then out of nowhere, uh, Jenny just comes in and immediately drops Director Bones. Like, uh, immediately drops it. Hmm. So we have a nice reunion with some of the JS. We have Damage. We have Yolanda uh, Wildcat, which is interesting. She's alive again because last I saw, she got her head uh, palmed clean off her shoulders by Superboy Prime. Nice. But, you know, she's alive again, so good on her. We also get to see Power, uh, original Power Girl and Adam Smasher brought back. And we see Barry Allen once again endangering the entire omniverse by being stuck in a gigantic hamster wheel for speed. <sighs> Fastest man alive, fast human power battery. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, you're not wrong. <laughs> uh, we see Roy uh, is looking for Leanne because he's on Earth Zero. Uh, well, he's technically what they think is Earth Zero, which is actually Earth Omega. Uh, Roy Harper, everyone's like, why are you not dead? He's like, 
Oh, Black Lantern Ring. Uh, if I use it, I become brains kind of zombie. But if I don't use it, this is king that keeps me alive. <laughs> pay, no, we're, pay no attention to the Black Lantern Ring. Yeah. <laughs> pay no attention to the ring. Oh, man. Uh, again, Psycho Pirate uh, messes up with them. We have more continuity because Power Girl even states, like, look, the last time I saw you in Infinite Crisis... Black Adam pretty much just literally shoved her face in. Why are you back? He's just like, I got better. <laughs> the, the the level of explanation is always funny. It's like, oh, it's a flesh. But you could you have no arms? To the flesh wound. <laughs> so we see that the people he was talking about are actually his injustice incarnate as they are fighting the Justice Incarnate team mixed with the lost GSA members. So we see original Professor Ivo, the man called Fate, that one Iron Man dude, Superwoman, Yellow Lantern, Joker, Magog, Lady Quark, which is weird Lady Quark is in this because she was a some she was like Namor good. Yeah. If that makes sense to people. No, I'm just borderline anti-hero, but I get the point. Yeah. So I don't know why she's back as a villain, but you know. Uh Giant fight, fighting everywhere. Uh, Barry is still kind of hypnotized by the hamster wheel, thinking he's doing everything he can to save the day and save the multiverse. He's chasing somebody, but we don't know who. We just see that in the speed force that he sees, he's chasing after something. Right. Um. President Superman uh, breaks out of his chain and starts to pretty much run run rampant across just like incarnate until that Iron Man kind of dude unveils he, that he is actually from Earth 8, which is the same Earth as President Superman. So he has President Superman's kryptonite, which is Meta Knight. I don't know. I don't know. I, I never read Multiplicity. Or whatever the Grant Morrison book was. So I have no idea. So all the JSA is uh, captured and held down along with Just League Incarnate. It's first down to Roy and Jenny. Jenny gets captured. Roy gets, uh, gets kind of an explanation of what the ring really is. Um, mm -hmm. It's the Omega Lantern ring. Which makes no sense because that was just Kyle's ring when he was in a certain book, and I, it was really just a white lantern ring. I have several questions. So there's some weirdness. <laughs> it's just a different universe's white lantern ring in the grand scheme of things, I, but it's also I, a black lantern ring at the same time. I have several questions, but go ahead. That, that, that no, by all like, means, ask the questions. No, I feel like I, I feel like if I ask this, it's gonna be a deeper rabbit hole. Just because the, the story was a little bit... Eh. So the Omega Ring, much like... In, it, he pretty much says, like, when the multiverse was recreated, this is like a pirate explaining the ring. Yeah. Just like Cal Jordan's ring looked for someone fearless, the ring, your ring specifically, looked for someone who suffered. And no one has suffered like you. Drug addiction... The pain of loving a villain that will never love you back. The death of your daughter. The re knowing your daughter's life and never seeing her. Yeah. And then he like literally talks is like, but you can't use that ring because ah, brains. And the ring will take over and turn you into a mindless creature of dark. It's like, look, if you work with us, we'll leave Earth Zero alone and your daughter will be safe. And then like that's where Psycho Pirate screws up. And Roy's like, so you're saying Leanne's not on this earth. <laughs> and Psycho <laughs> is like, Ugh. It's and Roy's like, meaning she's alive and she's back safe at her place. That's how you, that's how you get hurt. That, that's a, that's so a he nice. literally says like, and you said my ring is powered by suffering, you say. <laughs> so he pretty much just uses the entire ring's power in one go. So we see multiple versions of Roy Harper from Speedy to Red Arrow to Arsenal 
mm-hmm. all black black light constructs. And meanwhile, Roy does immediately become a zombie. Not surprising, but still funny. Yes. <laughs> uh, the bad side is they're too late because dark side steps in and we need to remember this dark side is the amalgamation of all dark sides ah so this is the true dark, dark side, side who is he is like solid solid gray dark side with purple mega beams pretty much saying all right well i've collected everybody i think it's, it's too late and any battle will only feed my power. The multiverse is barely created, and all citizens will kneel before me. And I now have my Omega Lantern at my side. I will control everything. <laughs> As trying. it was always meant to be. Sounds like Barry Bill's bad day in a different set, a different setting. Well, I mean, it's Roy Harper. The man, poor man, just can't catch a break. True. But it, it it's literally dark side is just stepping in it's dark side stepping in the play field. Gotcha. And that's all the books we got right now. Of course, guys, you can get all these books over at your local comic store. Ours is Rick's Comic City. Mm-hmm. We will at some point do a live episode from there. We just gotta work out logistics. Yep. Connie is enjoy, enjoying Dragon Con right now, safely, thankfully. So once she gets back, I will be able to talk to her and see if we can get that down the road. You can also find comics, be it floppies, digital, or normal or trades over at your local library. By all means, go do that. Because mm-hmm. because uh, if you can't get because if you can't get close to a comic book store, a library is the next best thing. Because me, I have said it. Joe has said it. Many other people have said it. Comic books are carried by libraries, even up to current issues, even mangas, even animes. So if you yourself are not able to get to a comic book store like Rick's Comic Book City, by the way, you can always go to a library and be able to check out things there. Trust me, do not let your library card go to waste. It's actually good for something, aside from collecting over there overdue, overdue books, because I saw a person when I was going to the local library near my spot pay $75 for a book that he kept for 20 years. So if anything, library libraries and the IRS have something in common. They never forget. Um, before we oh, wrap like Dairy Queen. Or Dairy, yeah, Dairy Queen. Dairy Queen always finds out. Yeah, Dairy Queen knows. <laughs> but before we before we call tonight, uh, Joe, you want to let the people know what you're doing and how they can find you, sir? Uh, I'm still streaming. I may stream after this just to, like, tap off the night. I am working on my Demolisher class. Or I may just take this guy and be a... Uh, on solo. I don't know what I'll do. I'll stream something. <laughs> uh, you can find that over at twitch.tv backslash Joe Tenlo. We'll just say it that way. It's easier for you guys to understand as a terrible pun on my name. Uh, you can also find me at Nashville Scarlet Spider on Instagram. Uh, Joe Tenlo on Twitter, though right now the handle is Joe Italian last name. That is still awesome. I'm sorry. That that to me, so, if that is not, don't change that. Think about that. I don't know. Jo- Joe Italian last name. That stands out. Don't change it. I'm just saying. But I'm sorry. I don't know. Uh, horse riding monkey enthusiast Joe may also work. Unless you're doing a super monkey ball reference, because they, they, I mean, it's either that or common rider. I mean, oh yeah, Common Rider Revice started. <laughs> really, really good. Uh, Ultraman Trigger. They're doing their couple episode team up with the previous Ultraman. So Ultraman Z from the previous year is currently teaming up with Ultraman Trigger at the moment. But Revice. Revice is already off to a good start. Our theme is families, ghosts, bathhouses, stamps, and our villains are Japanese Marriott, a Japanese mariachi troupe. Japanese mariachi. Complete with the dude in full three amigos regalia with sombrero. Also, it's the anniversary theme, so it's the 50 years of common Rider season. Oh, Lord, that's going to be in my head for a while. Japanese mariachi. Just... That I will being... send you pictures. That being said, let me also get to everybody else before I completely lose on this show. Um, I yeah, do Michael, I... once a week, every episode. <laughs> He, he he does make it his point to see to try to make me crack, but um, 
Let me not forget my buddy Shadow, Shadow Creator of Entertainment on YouTube. Um, you can definitely find him there as he does do uh, reviews and episodes of everything. Of course, he does also have his photography and his Shadow Creative After Dark. Definitely check him out, Shadow Creative Entertainment on YouTube and also on Facebook. Also, let me not forget my other uh, Bother Cop podcasting brethren, uh, my buddy Vaughn, Big BZ A Dot, who actually did podcast a little bit earlier today. You can definitely find him, A. Vaughn Westman, on Facebook, Big BZ A Dot on socials. As he did do the Smoking Trailer Sundays, uh, which are usually every Sunday from 6.30 to 9 p.m., in which he does reviews of trailers of movies and video games he finds interesting and wants to share with you guys. Of course, every Tuesday he does do the RAF, which is like America's Funniest Home Videos, except uh, done by World Star. So it's definitely for the grown and intended every Tuesday from 6.30 to 9 p.m. Uh, Vaughn also does do gaming as well, so definitely check him out in any other news. You can check him out on his contacts, A. The Bond West on Facebook or Big BZA Dot on all socials. And also, let me not forget my other podcasting people out there, Ari and, Ari and Geek, present Geek Salad, who are, which we're also sharing on their page. Thank you for that. Um, or also, uh, blurs, geeks of blurs just like us, who like to talk about everything fandom. I'm more than sure they'll be talking about Shang-Chi and Marvel's What If episode. Uh, usually drops every Wednesday and Thursday. You can definitely find them on Facebook and on YouTube. Just look up Ari and Geek, present Geek Salad. As for yours truly, the link at the bottom in red that you see down at the bottom is basically a link tree for my YouTube and Facebook groups for all of my podcasts, How the Frack We Got Here, Get Bit, and of course, How the Frack We Got Here. My IG handle, which is up at the top left, uh, Blackbox447, or I should say above Joe's head because that's where I have the placement there. Um, so you can definitely follow me there. I usually post a lot of things, movie reviews, video game reviews, and sometimes working out. I'm not in the peak shape that Joe is in right now, but hopefully I'll be able to get there one day. Um, but I do like to post the inspirational stuff and just follow me on there as well. Um, aside from that, guys, the last thing I'll sit there and say uh, before we come out, we will be back hopefully to our regular schedule of Friday nights of 8.30 to 10. Um, and yes, we will cover some more things about video games because yes, GamesCon has ended um, and DragonCon has ended and there has been some news in the world of video games. But we will cover that this Friday and uh, go from there as far as that goes. What do you got, Joe? I think PlayStation Experiences this week. Yes. The state of play? Yes. It is this weekend. You are correct. The uh, state of play is this weekend. Yep. Um, uh, oh, by the way, check the group chat real quick. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> really? I wasn't you, lying. You had to send me the... I would... <laughs> I just... I went again, people. Oh, oh, God. It's, I, he actually, for those that can't see it, and you can't, he sent me a picture of a Japanese mariachi troupe. It it did not disappoint. But that being said, guys, before we get in the, before we wrap this up, look, COVID-19 is real. Please, if you haven't been vaccinated, please be vaccinated. Please wear a mask. Please do whatever you can. It's not about it's not about you guys anymore. We have to think about others. So whatever you can do, please do if you haven't done already. And just like I said, the sooner we get this done, the sooner that my you know my compadres, like my friend Joe right here beside me, can breathe a little bit. You know, help him. He likes his job. He likes where he works. Please make it easier on him. And you can do so by just basically being a decent adult. That's all we ask you to do. So, um, with that being said, guys, like I said, we hope to see you guys this Friday again, 8.30 to 10 p.m. as usual on uh, on Instagram, as well as Facebook, as well as YouTube. Definitely check us check out the Facebook post page. Uh, well, ah, la, la. Thanks for that, Joe. You tongue twisted me. So, uh, for the Give It Podcast on Facebook and on YouTube, the name as it implies, you definitely find it there. And, of course, on Instagram, because we're starting to get to the point where we're going to probably, we're going to probably, we're going to probably, this is definitely not helping we're gonna probably be podcasting live um as we are live on facebook we're actually gonna start doing it on youtube and instagram as well just waiting on set equipment and yes uh once we get the logistics for rick's comic book city it is my near and dear hope that me and joe and possibly others can all go there and be able to set this up because as you've seen me and joe like talking about things of this nature because we have a, we are a fandom for it, we're fans of it, and we want it to continue. And we want to be able to talk to you guys like same way we talk to me, say me and him talk. Like he tries to get me to break every episode because he's so successful at it. But uh, with that being said, if you like what we did, please let me know. If you didn't like what we did, please let me know. We're trying to make this podcast better for everybody to enjoy. And yes, I am still working with YouTube because they finally got back to me about an email. 
for support that I sent three months ago that is now being assigned to a caseworker at YouTube. Yeah. So bear with us. Bear with us. I promise we will get Christopher this solved. Christopher Walken needs work. Say what? Christopher Walken needs work. <laughs> I, I, I could use some Christopher Walken right now. I wish I could. Where's that guy? Kevin Pollack? His Christopher Walken impression is immaculate. Guess what? Digimon Frontier, Ice Devimon, is the, is the best Christopher Walken. <laughs> I'm going to keep that in mind. But with that being said, guys, he's been Joe. I've been Will. This has been the Gibbon Podcast for Sunday night. Thank you all for watching. Please take care of yourselves and each other, and we will get through this. Have a good night, guys. We'll hope to see you next Friday. Peace.